This is the Kia Nero, and it's a petrol electric hybrid to rival the Toyota Prius. I just can't understand why it's got a similar name to a Roman emperor, a baddie from Star Trek, or some super cool London dubstep group. Actually, it looks a bit like a small Sportage. Why don't they just call it the Kia Smalltaj? In terms of pricing, it starts from £23,000. If you click up there, you can go to carway.co.uk and compare offers on the Kia Nero, see what price you can get it for. It's worth doing if you're thinking about buying a new car or recommending it to a friend who's shopping for a new car. So one of the things I like about the Nero is even though it's a high-tech hybrid, on the inside, it just seems like a normal car. It's not trying too hard. Quality is actually pretty good with plenty of soft touch materials about the place and all the major touch points they feel fairly nice as well. So equipment on this car is actually very generous. As standard all models get things like reversing sensors, part leather seats. You also get cruise control with a speed limiter. You also get Apple CarPlay and Android Auto standard, which is handy because the entry level seven inch screen doesn't have its own Navi system. If you want that, you have to step up to the three model, which is actually the mid-spec car. And that's what this is. And it's got loads of stuff then. So you get an eight inch screen with sat nav and the infotainment system itself is fairly easy to use. The graphics, they're not the sharpest, but they're nice and bright and you've got these shortcut menu buttons which make it a doddle to just move through different menus. Now if you click up there you can watch my detailed infotainment video review and in it I'll explain some more about this car's specification levels. This 3 model also gets stuff like wireless charging for your mobile phone but my OnePlus 5 doesn't have that functionality but it doesn't matter because there's so many different charging points in this car anyway. You also get all round parking sensors and there's full leather seats and they're electrically operated and look at this there's just so much adjustment in this car's driving position. I mean, if you're absolutely huge, you will be fine here in the Nero, because look how much room I've got. So, <laughs> it's massive, and there's plenty of adjustment in the steering wheel. Don't normally show that off because it's very similar on most cars, but this does have quite a lot of movement. So, could be spaces, they're all right. You fit a big bottle in the door bins. You've got a bit of extra storage under here with another charging point, actually. The glove box isn't particularly large, but it's, it's all right. And you've got some cup holders down here. And I should point out while I'm down here that Look, here's another feature this car has on this mid-level. You've got heated seats and a heated steering wheel. <laughs> That's just loads of kit. Let's move on to the back seats. Are they as good? Well, actually, <laughs> they might be devoid of features with no charging points, but the space you've got here is really, really good. These back seats are very comfy. So look, loads of knee room. Absolutely loads of headroom. People well over six foot are going to be fine. If you need to carry three at once in the back, it's not too bad. It's helped by the fact that this seat doesn't sit too high, so there's still lots of headroom. And the floor is reasonably flat, so there's plenty of room for everyone's feet. Quite impressed. And, well, you've got an armrest like on many cars, and there's a couple of cup holders as well. As for the door bins in the back, well, bear with me. I'll just get that big bottle again. Will they fit? Well, yes, they will, but you won't be able to put anything else in there. Still, practicality is good on this car, and that extends to the boot. You see, while the capacity may not be any more than something like a Volkswagen Golf, because this car is quite high up, it makes it very easy to lift things in and out of the car, and there's hardly any lift to lift stuff over either. I like the fact that you have a slideable low cover rather than a traditional parcel shelf. You do have to store it in the car, though, and it doesn't really... Look, fit <laughs> there's nowhere to leave which is annoying it's a shame that is bit of a shame now under here you do have some more storage so you can put bits and pieces in there if you want to and there's various tethers about the place now i can't see a 12 volt socket for charging a vacuum cleaner for hoovering out the boot or something like that as for folding the seats down it's easy you just reach in and do it and when you fold them down you get a nice flat low floor and that means that it's easy to slide things <laughs> right at the front of the car. Don't worry, it didn't damage anything. And yeah, the space itself is reasonably large as well. Now, if you want more details on this car's practicality, click up there to watch my detailed video. In it, you'll be able to see just how much stuff you can cram in this car's boot, how easy it is to fit a child seat, and what it's like with three adults in the back. Now you know what this car is like on the inside, let's find out how it drives. Now, the Kia Nero is pretty nice to drive in town. It's reasonably manoeuvrable. One problem I do have, though, is that the view at the back window isn't that great because it's quite small and this pillar is really thick that creates a bit of a blind spot especially when you're at junctions and so if you have to peer around it then there's the comfort so it's generally all right but if you hit a pothole you do feel a bit more than you would do in a toyota prius now one area where the nero is better than the prius is its brakes so when you touch the brake pedal 
you actually recoup lost energy, put it into the battery, which you can then use to power that electric motor, and that helps with your economy. But in the Prius, the brakes feel all jerky when this happens, but in the Nero, they're just like the brakes in a normal car. You don't notice that they're actually recharging the battery. It's, it's natural, it's nice. Another way the Nero feels a bit more natural than the Prius is its gearbox. You've got a normal six-speed automatic gearbox, and as a result, the car just drives through its gears in a normal way. The Prius does this thing where it holds its revs at a constant rate, and then the speed increases, and you get this like Bleh! noise. However, once you get up to speed, this Nero is a little less relaxing than the Prius. You just get a little bit more tire roar and wind noise as well. Maybe that's because it's more a bright car because of that SUV body. When you encounter a twisty road in the Kia Nero, it's actually all right. It doesn't roll about too much in the bends at all, and it steers sharply enough. It's, it actually handles a bit better than a Toyota Prius. That's the trade-off for that firmer suspension, which makes it a bit bumpy in town. But really, you buy a hybrid for mainly driving in town rather than hurling down a back room. Now, if you want more information on what this car's like to drive, click up there to watch my point of view test drive, and that puts you in the driving seat. As for the economy, well, the particular Kia Nero I'm driving here it should do 64 miles per gallon, and I'm getting 56, which is pretty close. Though it's not as good as the economy you'll get from a Toyota Prius. Still, if you're the kind of person who likes this kind of SUV sort of car, I would normally buy a diesel, but I've been put off a diesel because of the recent scandals. I think this could be well worth a look. Now then, it's time for the car wow, five annoying things about this car. Kia hasn't done a very good job of matching the paint and the parking sensors to the rest of the body. In fact, they look like little car zits. I'll just give it a squeeze. Considering this is supposed to be a high-tech car, how come there's some old-fashioned foot-operated parking brake? Surely they could have done an electrically operated one. The gear selector, it's unnecessarily large for a hybrid vehicle. It's about the same size as a throttle lever on a Boeing 747 jet. While there's clearly room for a spare wheel in this Kia Nero, you can't get one like you can with a Toyota Prius. Instead, all you have is the puncture repair kit. Brilliant. If you're creeping along in traffic using the brake, the car makes this weird groaning sound. It's like the dying moan of some prehistoric animal. Don't worry, there's still plenty to like about this car. Here's the car wow five cool features. Being a Kia, you get an industry leading seven year, 100,000 mile warranty. To help keep weight down, the boot, the bonnet, and parts of the suspension are made out of aluminium. While the seat frames are about 1.2 kilos lighter than the average seat frame in a normal Kia car. There's flaps over the grille, which close when the engine doesn't need cooling and you get these special breathers down the side of the car which smooth the airflow down the side, all help improve the aerodynamics for maximum efficiency. The exhaust valves in the engine are made out of sodium for improved heat exchange. Yeah, actually, if you spill salt, you should throw it over your shoulder, shouldn't you, for good luck? Come on, salt, sodium chloride. Didn't you do science at school? You can get the car with JBL speakers so you can enjoy your wicked beats now, innit? JBL stands for Just Blummin' Loud. Not really, doesn't it? I just made that up. Now, if you click up there, you can go to carwow.co.uk for more information and to check out the very best deals on the Kia Nero. So then, what's my verdict on it? Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I reckon you should consider the Kia Nero. It's a good car, it's just that some others do the whole hybrid thing a little bit better. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and share it and click on our logo to subscribe to our channel. Also click on the video windows for more car wow videos.